Great to have you back, friends. Someone insults you and you don't know how to respond, so instead, you react. You smile politely, portray weak vocal tonality and body language, but deep down you get angry. You seem like an insecure dumbass to the world, and the person who insulted you now gets to live rent-free inside your mind for the upcoming days. Look at this scene. You really should try one of those standing desks. It's better on the back for a woman of your age. Now, how would you respond if someone insulted you like that? I'll provide two responses that I would give later in the video and I'll also explain what the conversational frame is in this scene. In these highly requested new verbal dominance video series, I'll cover tools and strategies, and there's a ton of them guys, that will enable you to do a lot. Let's mention the following five for now. First, you'll be able to read the social frame and twist it however you like. Take a look at this. No, don't touch me. No, 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 no I'm gonna burn you. No, no, you're not. Are you gonna be okay? No. You're in a relationship with me, everything will never be okay. But I think I can figure this out, yeah. What you just saw is Tony Stark's completely shifted the entire frame there by deliberately misunderstanding the question, which is a great technique. Here's another short example of Thomas Shelby. By the way, I've got a huge list of him for you guys. This family does everything open. You have nothing more to say to this meeting, Thomas? Nothing that's women's business. This whole bloody enterprise was women's business while you boys were away at war. What's changed? We came back. The second thing you'll be able to do is increase your verbal wit. Let's show a quick example of this. You shouldn't eavesdrop on people. You better get used to it, pal. It's not going to be much privacy where you're going. Damn right. This time next week, I'll be sucking down pina coladas in a hot tub with six girls named Amber and Tiffany. More like taking a shower with two guys named Jamal and Jesus, if you know what I mean. And here's the bad news. That thing you're sucking on, it's not a pina colada. <laughs> Third, you'll become a fun person to be around. Developing humor, guys, is incredibly important for a plethora of reasons, which we'll also cover in the attractiveness videos. Fourth, you'll become confident as a person because you'll be less afraid to enter verbal confrontations. Fifth, you'll be able to come up with great comebacks, and this will come to you instantly after good practice. Your Honor, his client blatantly declares his rants or merely his opinions for the sole purpose of skirting libel law. I drive 65 for the sole purpose of avoiding a speeding ticket. Doesn't make me a criminal. You really only drive 65? In a school zone. You know I don't make empty promises, so believe me when I say this. Trust in the process and put in the work, guys. I'll provide a great golden ticket for these kind of situations for you to employ at any given time with any given person. It has never failed me once. But in this very first video of a hopefully very long video series, I'll cover what I mean with verbal dominance. Then we'll cover some clips and end with a more thorough breakdown. Jesus, you scared me. <laughs> Give me the bag, turn around, put your hands behind your back. You're under arrest. Okay. Well, hold on one second. I just have two questions, okay? Um, first question, where'd you get that jacket? It's a statement piece. Verbal dominance. You've heard me allude to it in a couple of videos. Verbal dominance sounds perhaps a little domineering. It has a negative undertone and puts everything in a frame of conflict. Either you're dominated or you're the one dominating. This, guys, is the last thing I want you to think about. And in future videos, I'll provide plenty examples on why you don't need to win every interaction or trying to show yourself as being the one who comes out on top. I'll also do a mix of verbal breakdown with body language analysis and cover some good techniques like the state-breaking questions. I understand you know a man called Jimmy McCavan. May I take a cigarette? Violent men are the easiest to deal with. So tell me, which brand of rebel are you, right? Now, when I say verbal dominance, think more of it as a subset of exceptionally acquired social skills that enable you to communicate with empathy and assertiveness. Not necessarily aggressiveness, but assertiveness. There's a distinction there. I also want you to be able to use a good amount of your vocal range, which I'll cover in the vocal power or vocal tonality video. Friends, Empathy, sympathy, and compassion should be your modus operandi in the vast majority of your interactions, but if need be, you'll have the tool set to respond to verbal aggressors, bullies, and people who are unethically handling social situations. Whether you choose to deploy that tool set, that is entirely up to you. 
by acquiring the verbal dominance skill set, you'll be able to form deep, long-lasting relationships, whether that's in business, personal, or your love life. The aim is to become a master in communication. You'll learn listening techniques that I've gained and applied in my life for almost a decade and techniques that I'm currently learning in psychology class alongside applied information from books next to the body language videos. This video series will aid you tremendously in achieving the goal of becoming a master communicator. So here's a great example of assertive, not aggressive, verbal dominance used for a positive yet powerful vibe. A little context. Jessica Pearson, who is the managing partner, tricked her employee Mike Ross. As you might remember from the Laws of Powers video, specifically Law 1. I see that you're on the other side. Is there some rule against my checking on my own employee? I'm confident that after tomorrow, you'll either settle or lose. And why is that? Because I've prepared a motion. What does it say? It says you're gonna lose. Then that's too bad, because you're gonna throw it away. What? You heard me. You're going to go home. You don't call, you don't answer, and you don't come back until that deadline is passed. Wait a minute. I won't. You will. Harvey will never forgive me. Right now, your problem isn't with Harvey. Your problem is with me. You don't do this. Who's to say you don't end up in a cell for practicing law without a degree? Mike eventually blackmailed her back. The situation is way more complex, but for now this will suffice. Now, after some time, both of them get eye to eye again. Um, I'm sorry, I'll come back. It's okay. We're all good. We're good? Just quickly note Mike's body language here. Um, I'm sorry, I'll come back. It's okay. We're all good. We're? Good? Sheepish facial expression, apologizing and looking at the ground like a prey animal in this context. I want you to pause for a second and imagine. You are Jessica Pearson. You want to forgive Mike, so how would you say it without coming over as weak? A simple we're good will suffice, right? But think of a different way of formulating that. This is how she does it. We're good? When you work with tigers, once in a while they're going to take a swipe at you. I like working with tigers. She uses a great analogy. When you work with tigers, once in a while they're going to take a swipe at you. I like working with tigers. Comparing him to a tiger and tells him indirectly, I like working with you. In this way, she doesn't minimize him as a person, but actually makes him look better. However, this could encourage him to seek conflict with her again or blackmail her again in the future. In order for this not to happen or at least dissuade him of doing this again, she adds this. I like working with tigers. Of course, when they get out of hand, you have to put them down. Great verbal dominance, guys. Nothing domineering but solving conflict in an assertive way and, at the end, both parties feel better about the situation. It's a skill that I want you to develop. Jessica is... Like Harvey, a master of frame control, which is a prerequisite to becoming a master of verbal dominance. I will cover the same example in a later video as well, since she used a technique that you need to have in your arsenal. Like I said, there is a ton of examples I have for you, whether from my personal life, whether that's from dating, raw conflicts or friendly banter, but also from movies and TV shows with which we'll start. Okay guys, let's cover this scene. There is a lot of animosity and bad blood between these two characters. One which you already know, Jessica Pearson, and the other one is Daniel Hartman, who we've seen in Law 9 from the Laws of Power videos. Let's play. You really should try one of those standing desks. It's better on the back for a woman of your age. He's insulting her big time. Listen to it again. You really should try one of those standing desks. It's better on the back for a woman of your age. This time with subtitles. And try to determine what the underlying frame is right now. You really should try one of those standing desks. It's better on the back for a woman of your age. So he implies that she is old and by extension needs to take better care of herself. How would you respond if you were in her shoes? Guys, in every video I want you to come up with multiple responses, with multiple comebacks. I'll explain the reason why in a second. So try to come up with a couple of responses. Here you go. You really should try one of those standing desks. It's better on the back for a woman of your age. In the beginning, these comebacks won't come naturally to you, hence why you need to keep practicing. Eventually, 
Through sheer repetition and my guidance, you'll become a killer in these responses. There is a tool that I use, my golden ticket so to speak, that I have been able to apply anywhere to this day. I'll provide that tool in another video because it deserves an entire video about it alone. So let me give you two responses I've come up with on the spot in this situation. The first one is a non-confronting way and it diffuses the tension and the second one is more confronting. You really should try one of those standing desks. It's better on the back for a woman of your age. So for the first one, you're right as always. In fact, I'm so old I can't even cross the street on my own anymore, nor can I brush my teeth and have developed memory problems, hence. I appreciate that you're the one coming to me, Mr. Young and Fit Boy. Gosh, I wish I was your age. I tried to seduce you. What can I help you with? What you would do with this response is you're biting into his frame and then puff him up. There is nothing he can say to insult you again. If he says, for example, I'd never be interested in you. All you have to do then is to just keep feeding his ego. You could answer with, I know, an old, ugly, saggy lady like me would never be able to seduce a high status, gorgeous chat like you. You're way out of my miserable and lowly league. But hey, one can still wish, right? See, by doing this, you'll always have the upper hand, especially with people who are braggadocious. This is a powerful technique which I'll expand on as said before. And you will need to have this in your arsenal, just like that. So guys, no matter what happens around you in your life, when people attack you or confront you or try to take the piss out of you, you just bite into the frame, take charge of it, and maybe the person who you are doing it to may not notice it in an instant, but if you keep going like this, everyone around you will notice. They will start laughing because they will see the joke in it, and the person, when they find out, it will be way too late. It's a very non-confronting way of taking the piss off someone. Having said that, that takes us to the second response, which is a different and more confrontational route. You really should try one of those standing desks. It's better on the back for a woman of your age. Says the man with the gray hair who can only use a smartphone with his index finger and has a limp in his walk. What is it? Now those are two off the cuff responses, so let's play the scene and see her masterful response. You really should try one of those standing desks. It's better on the back for a woman of your age. This is a standing desk for a man of your height. Emotional damage! Once more. You really should try one of those standing desks. It's better on the back for a woman of your age. This is a standing desk for a man of your height. That is verbal dominance, guys. What you notice her doing is she shifts the entire frame. This is powerful for many reasons, but let's pick apart two of them. First, she doesn't need to defend the frame. See, one of the worst things you can usually do in these kind of scenarios is trying to defend yourself. I'll cover this with some examples in the frame control video. For example, if she went the defensive route in this scenario, she'd answer with something along the lines of, I'm not old, you're old. Or, you know these chairs are actually very expensive and good for your back. Or, no, these chairs are very comfortable actually. Any responses along those lines, guys, she'd be on the defense and she'd be done for. She'd be buying into his frame without controlling it. My first response that I gave was buying into the frame, but taking full charge of it. So if you're buying into someone's frame in these kind of situations, make sure you can own it. Second, she has ultimate freedom to interpret the entire situation and throw out a hook. If he bites, she is the one dictating the conversational frame. The frame before was, you're an old woman. You really should try one of those standing desks. It's better on the back for a woman of your age. She didn't buy into that frame. She shifted the frame by introducing her own frame. Her frame is, you're a short guy. She doesn't just say, hey, you're short. She adds in an extra element by mirroring the standing desk part and reframing it entirely. This is a standing desk for a man of your height. And now that the hook is out, will he bite or not? This is a standing desk for a man of your height. Nice to see you, Jessica. Daniel Hartman, he's too smart to do that. But friends, how many times has this happened to you in your own life, where someone either maliciously or benevolently made a joke or said something where you didn't know any response to? Then when you get home or are taking a shower, all of a sudden that light bulb moment comes and you're like, ah, that's what I should have said. It's almost like a puzzle you couldn't solve on the spot, but after your mind starts deliberating about it, it comes up with an answer. 
In the beginning, coming up with these responses might take you hours or days or even weeks after it has happened. But by practicing coming up with these responses, you'll get faster and faster and faster to the point you'll be able to come up with it instantly. The refractory period will shorten significantly guys. The VIP Patreon members have practiced this with me and have seen me use this a lot of times in the live sessions. I might make a separate tier where I'll cover a short scene provided by you live every single week. Let me know if that is something that you're interested in. Like I said, you can do this by using my golden ticket. A video on that will be made but even with that tool, if you don't practice, you won't get good at it. In the beginning, the VIP Patreon members were like, okay, I don't know how to respond at this. And I would remind them, because the golden ticket consists of two parts, I would tell them, where would you start? Then I would give them some time, think about it, think about it, and think about it. Then they would provide their response, and we would go over them. And this way, they've become faster. And now, some of them can come up on the spot like it. And some of them are actually a really killer. Friends, I want you to look at this scene. Time for the betting ceremony. There will be no betting ceremony. There will be if I command it. Ladies, attend to my uncle. He's not heavy. Then you'll be fucking your own bride with a wooden cock. What did you say? Now, what would your response be? Think about it and try coming up with a good response. And if you're really brave, write it down in the comments. And I'll take some of your responses in the next video when we cover this scene plus my golden ticket which I'll use for almost any verbal dominance videos. Friends, this was a short introductory video about verbal dominance. In the meanwhile, you can check the most recent video here and I also want you to watch this video over here.